Hello guys, welcome back to a very special eviction episode of Big Brother because we did it guys! We got Quinn out! Even though I actually didn't want him to go by the end. This is what I mean by a flip-flop on people too much. A flip-flop too much. Because what do you mean? Two weeks ago I was all for him going home and now I was looking to save him? This is kind of crazy. I feel like I'm on an emotional journey with these people and I don't quite know what's going to happen next because now we're looking at a very, very interesting final eight, but more on that later. Before we get into the episode, I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the series so far and make sure to like, comment and subscribe doing all that YouTube stuff that you guys do so well. But before we start, I just want to say this episode was actually a very special episode because the first eviction episode that Julie Chen has not hosted. It was actually hosted by Jerry O'Connell. I do not know who this man is. I'm not in America, so I do not know this man. I recognise him from, like, a few movies, but that's about it. I think he was in, like, Scream, one of the Scream movies, Scream 2, maybe? I don't know. But either way, he did a fantastic job as host. I, I felt like it was really... It, the vibe didn't change that much, I guess, is what I'm going for here. So, the veto meeting from yesterday's episode was cut out, and it was placed in this episode, I guess, to fill time. I feel like they're struggling to find time to fill now that they've got the AI arena that's been lost, I guess. It's tough. It's, it's sad that they've got rid of the AI arena. I really would have liked them to have kept it all the way through because I really felt like it added something special to the game. And it also meant that each week it was utterly unpredictable as well, which was also fantastic. So we have Mackenzie using the POV, the power of veto on Angela. And I gotta say, kind of shocking that Leah and Mackenzie have both used the power of veto on Angela when in the first week they were both desperate to get rid of her, which I just find hysterical in my opinion. But either way, three times in one season it being used on one person and she hasn't even used it on herself yet, which is kind of crazy. So you know what? Big props to her. I would love to see her win a veto for herself if she gets back on the block. We're still waiting to find out who the next head of household is. I'm really nervous. I don't know who it's going to be, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a Leah or Angela one just to really stir things up and get both sides of the house really fighting each other. But anyway, I really enjoyed this veto meeting. You could tell Quinn was like, oh, this is actual ass. What do you mean she's been saved again? Again? Yeah, this is ridiculous. So, Chelsea and Qu Qu Quam? I was about to say Quinn, but I meant Cam. Chelsea and Cam were having a conversation about whether Quinn is the right person to go home or not. Chelsea seems to be having this dilemma between her head and her heart. Her head is saying that she wants to get rid of Quinn, but her heart is saying that she wants to keep Quinn because actually Quinn's a really, really lovely guy, etc, etc, etc. And I have gotten the impression that he is a very, very lovely guy. Very poor strategist. Very poor game player but a very lovely person nonetheless. And I think that's why I was like, oh, I don't really want him to go this week because obviously Chemo's on the block and Chemo's part of a voting block of three, which I'm still really pissed off that no one is really understanding how detrimental that group of three is if they're going to be put in power. It's tough. It really is. I, I don't want them to be in power. Next week, it's looking like it's going to be the double potentially the week after, I don't know. But either way, something's happening here and I'm just nervous. I'm nervous for Angela. I'm hoping she steps through the cracks, but I don't think she will. I think she'll be an easy, let's get her gone now. And I'm, I'm sad that that's going to be the case. But anyway, moving back to Chelsea and Cam. Cam is saying that Quinn betrayed the P Pentagon's Alliance Trust, which like, I do agree, Quinn was kind of the reason why the Pentagon imploded because he did tell t -Core and Chemo and then they hatched the plot to get rid of Cedric and then it was just an absolute mess from there on out. So I gotta say, it's interesting that Cam and Chelsea are still holding resentment from that even though that was so many weeks ago, so many weeks ago and Quinn has proven his trust since. But it is where it is. Old habits die hard. Grudges. What is it? Ancient grudge break to new mutiny from Romeo and Juliet. Something like that. 
yep, I'm very, very interested to see how this goes down. But currently, Chelsea and Cam very much against Quinn staying in the house. So there was a whole kerfuffle around Leah and Angela and Chelsea and a whole miscommunication story. It's tough. And I do feel bad for both Angela and Leah. So just to catch you up on the conversation that was happening, Angela saw that Quinn and Leah were hanging out with the trio. She mistook that for the fact that they've solidified an alliance. She's gone to talk to Chelsea and she says she thinks that an alliance has been formed with Quinn, Leah and the trio. And then Chelsea has then told Leah that Angela said to her that Leah was leading some kind of alliance with the trio and Quinn. I don't quite know how that got misinterpreted because they even showed a flashback and Angela didn't say those words. So I feel like this has been blown out of proportion. But obviously Leah's kind of upset and I don't blame her because this kind of situation puts her name in the firing line. It puts her friend on the block. And Angela, who she just saved, has been the perpetrator, apparently. But Angela goes in and she goes, Oh my god, I, I would never have done that. I would never have done that. No, no, certainly not. She sounds a little bit like Jennifer Coolidge, but without the like, Oh, I don't quite remember how to do Jennifer Coolidge's voice. Sometimes she just she just channels through me and just radiates out Jennifer Coolidge-ness. But not today, apparently. Not today. So yeah, I feel like it was a, definitely a misunderstanding, a huge one. And I think when Angela went to go talk to Chelsea and was like, I don't remember what I said. And Chelsea was like, this is what you said. She was like, mm, yeah, okay, things have gotten misconstrued. So cool, cool, cool. Let's just move on. And then she went to go talk to Leah, clear things up. And Leah kind of believes her, kind of doesn't. But like, it's like, I still need to work with you because I want to. And I was like, okay, good. As long as Leah is still on Angela's side, Angela's still got some kind of ally in this game, I'm on board because I can't watch another week of her going up on the block and wondering, wait and seeing whether she gets taken down off of the block by a veto. I can't believe it happened this week. I can't believe it happened last week. I can't believe it happened week three. So genuinely, this is crazy times. So there was a game of kiss, marry, evict that was played within the house. It was kind of funny. It was kind of jovial. And a couple of the girls said that they were going to marry Quinn, Leah included. And Quinn is just so smitten over Leah. It is actually kind of cute. And they're trying to set him up with Leah in the bathroom. They're like, go on, kiss, kiss, kiss. And Leah's like, no, no, I couldn't possibly, no. And then she actually does admit in a diary room later that she thinks she might have a little bit of a crush on Quinn, which I found hilarious, first of all, because let's be honest, she's been sort of like playing him this entire time. And now she actually does have a crush on him. That's kind of sad. That's so upsetting, I won't lie. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. But you know what, Quinn? I rate it. I think, you know what? Good on you, mate, for sticking with it and keeping on going. Keeping on, keeping on. Yeah, honestly, it's tough. It is tough when you like someone and they don't like you back. But it's a fact of life. It's going to happen. But maybe there is a future for Leah and Quinn in the jury house when Leah inevitably gets evicted because I don't think she's making top two. So obviously Quinn has to beg for some votes and I'm so sad that they completely cut out the bit where he like puts bandana on a stick, goes around like he's a hobo and he's walking around he's like ah oh, ha any votes for me? <laughs> it was such a funny thing to watch on feeds and on Twitter and I really, really rated the fact that he did that because I was like, wow, actually, if he came around doing that, I might actually just vote for him just because I can't let this entertainment leave the house. Who cares about my game? I need to be entertained in this house. And if he's up on the block every week doing silly things to try and get me to vote for him, I'm going to vote for him and I'm going to evict the other person because it's funny. It's really entertaining. He uh, did talk to MJ and Cam and his conversation was basically along the lines of your best bet is keeping me in the game because there's a voting block of three people. However, currently as it stands with the nine people, there are three voting blocks and there's one that's significantly weaker than the other two, but the other two are quite strong. The strongest one obviously is Chemo, T-Core and Rubina. 
that would be the one to target. They're the strongest. They're the ones that are the most aligned currently. Then you've got McKenzie, Chelsea, and Cam. Another voting block. One of them is HOH currently. So they should try and take out the other strong one. The other voting block is currently Leah, who controls Quinn and Angela. And they're not necessarily completely aligned with each other because obviously Quinn and Angela are a little bit like, Bruh. but it actually makes more sense for Quinn and Angela to work together because they're the ones that are always being targeted. So I just think getting rid of Quinn at this point in the game is a poor decision. He's going to go to jury anyway. Let's destroy the voting block that is very strong right now because we're going into top eight with three people who are like this with each other. They're not going to backstab each other. They're going to just take everyone out until they get top three and then it's just going to be a hard decision of who goes to top two, which sucks, but it is what it is. So honestly, sucks to suck, but I think Chemo should have gone home this week. I'll be dead honest. I think he should have. So that does bring us to voting time. Both of them gave speeches. Uh, Quinn, he was just waffling a load of a waffle. And Chemo, again, he tries to pluck at the heartstrings. He's like, oh, I want to stay to, to represent people. And I was like, okay, that's that's nice and good. But like, you did that last week. Can we, can we do something else this week, please? But yeah, voting time was interesting. T-Core voted for Quinn. Leah voted for Chemo. Angela voted for Chemo. Rubina voted for Quinn, Mackenzie voted for Quinn, and Cam voted for Quinn, meaning Quinn went home in a 4-2 to two vote. Tough, is what I've got to say to that, tough. Because I personally think this season has been so good because every single vote has not been unanimous. There has not been a single unanimous vote. Every single week the veto has been used. Every single week somebody has gone home that I've gone... At the start of the week, did not expect them to be the one going home. Ra. Okay, cool. So honestly, I feel like this show is doing a fantastic job of keeping it energetic, keeping it alive, keeping it entertaining. And honestly, if I didn't have Twitter and I didn't have live feeds, I would be shocked tuning into every single episode. And that is saying something because I'm not easily shocked when it comes to reality TV, but this has been incredible to watch. So with Quinn's exit speech, he has not had a, he's had a rough time in the Big Brother house. Two failed HOHs. He didn't even get to meet Julie on the way out. He barely made jury. Oh, it's just tough, 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 tough for him. Honestly, I feel bad. But also, game's the game at the end of the day. So, Quinn acknowledged that he broke too much trust in the house too early on. So, no one could actually have a alliance with him because they were always worried that he was going to backstab them and turn on them. He said that he played that purposely because he was like, even if I go out week two, I know that I've played the most interesting game. I'm a liar at the end of the day in the game and I played the most interesting game I possibly could have. I agree. I feel like he's been a fantastic addition to this cast. As much as I despised him for a couple of weeks and I was like, grr, get him out of the house. He provided so much entertainment and excitement that actually taking him out of this game would have been detrimental earlier on in the game. And I feel like he's provided so many good moments that... I wouldn't have had it any other way. He also said that strategically, this move, taking him out of the house, was bad because of that voting block, which I've already said multiple times over the last couple of weeks. Chemo should have gone out before jury because having that voting block in jury is going to really shaft whoever makes it top two because they will all vote together at the end of the day. They will. I would be very surprised if Rubina, t and Chemo vote for different people to win if they all end up on um, the jury then we also have quinn wanting to keep t court on side he said this last week when he was hoh he said he wanted to try and keep t court around because he feels like she is going to make it further in the competition she's not going to be a target and therefore she needs to have him on side because she'll end up winning an hoh before anybody else in her voting block does which i kind of agree with actually t court is very good at the mental comps and she's all right at the physical comps. She hasn't won one yet, but she's good at the mental ones, definitely. Then we have the immunity idol gag, which was so funny. As a survivor watcher, I really appreciated that. I haven't got to the hidden immunity idols yet, but like I heard they're a thing and I'm really excited to get to them. I've heard like season 11's when they come in, which is really cool. So I'm hoping, beyond hope, that like this is like a cool addition to survivor. But anyway, back to Big Brother. 
great gag very funny quinn even when he's literally out of the house is providing us with entertainment and humor so yeah i really really enjoyed it i thought it was great so that is pretty much it for today thank you guys for watching hope you guys have enjoyed there was like a little teaser from ainsley being like ah oh, janky's taking over next week i'm going on a world tour and i was like oh no oh no joy but anyway thank you guys for watching hope you guys have enjoyed make sure to like comment and subscribe and do all that youtube stuff that you guys do so well but until then keep on ranting bye now